tonight's episode. Gunfight at Osage Station. Oh, howdy. I'm Bob Buffington. Welcome to Tales of the Wild West. Gunslingers, gamblers, horse thieves, and cattle rustlers are an enduring part of the Old West. Some became celebrities in their own, often brief lives. Others faded into the dust of unmarked graves in Boot Hill. One such desperado was Caleb Earl Bateman, who wanted more than anything to be a household name like his hero, William H. Bonney, known to all as Billy the Kid. Even though William Bonney, better known as Billy the Kid, had been dead for over a decade, it's entirely credible that Caleb Bateman was obsessed with walking in the young outlaw's footsteps. You see, Billy was a celebrity before Pat Garrett shot him in 1881, and his myth only grew after he was dead because the public simply couldn't get enough news, real or fabricated, about the likable young man barely out of his teens. Like so many other rebels in post-Civil War America, William Bonney became like a Robin Hood in the minds of many people, a loyal hand avenging the death of his murdered boss, a poor misunderstood young man whose life was cut short. In other words, a hero. Caleb Earl Bateman was born in Clay County, Missouri on September 10th, 1847. His father, Joshua Robert Bateman, left home when Caleb was five. His mother, Alice, did her best raising Caleb, but she herself was quoted as saying, that boy had the devil in him. The approach of the American Civil War shaped the life of Caleb Earl. At the age of 14, he joined the Confederate forces and learned the ways of Johnny Reb guerrilla tactics, stealing and bushwhacking to survive. Caleb killed his first man when he was just 15 years old. Caleb Bateman became Billy the Kid. And just like Billy, he eventually crossed the wrong man. Found him, Paul, not 20 miles back, near the old Osage station. I was on the old wagon trail yesterday, nary a sign. They didn't use the trail, took him north through Creek Run, circled around, and brought him through the east draw. I wouldn't have found him if it wasn't for a stray. We got him this time, Paul. Get your men, stay with your mall just in case. Ain't likely, Paul. Wait for the federal marshal, please. I can't, you know I can't. In 1864, Cyrus and Rachel McCall, their 10-year-old son and a few loyal hands drove 300 head of cattle from West Texas to settle in the newly formed Montana Territory. They endured frigid winters, angry miners, and hostile engines to build a thriving cattle empire known as the Big Sky Ranch. Now, Cyrus McCall didn't get where he was by avoiding a fight, and it wasn't about to this time. Caleb Bateman had assembled a gang of thieves and killers who followed his orders without question. Among them was Sidus Dobson, who was wanted in just about every state and territory west of the Mississippi, and Lempo Breen, who had been a Crow captive for over 10 years. And when a cavalry raid returned him to white society, he found its rules and restrictions intolerable. With Bateman, Breen found a way to act out his hatred for his own kind. Caleb Bateman had become the most successful rustler in western Montana. With a ready market for stolen beef, 
which would bring maybe $15 a head, about half of a legal sale, and with not nearly enough cow hands to cover all the territory available. It was relatively easy to swoop in, grab up a few beeves, and be gone before a vulnerable rancher even knew what hit him. And maybe 50 or so head of cattle would bring a tidy sum to Bateman and his men, certainly enough to keep them in whiskey and women between raids. 50 head, however, to a cattleman could be disastrous. So really, it was just a matter of time until Bateman stole from the wrong man. The West could be perilous for women. Pop culture, and I think film in particular, often shows women being taken captive by Indians or, or being forced into brothels uh, in these cattle and mining boom towns. But less well known is that they, they also often fell victim to gangs of outlaws, especially if the outlaws had a hideout that served as a base of operations. Women were needed for their domestic labor. Native American women who were, who were captured by warring tribes, they might find themselves sold to outlaws or, or bartered for, for whiskey and weapons, or simply sold by their families. Uh, white women who, who lived on these isolated ranches, if their husbands were away from the house, they might very well find themselves kidnapped by the outlaws and taken into servitude. However they arrived at this, at this, into this captivity, their lives were really pretty grim. It was, it was servitude and physical abuse. morbid curiosity about white women captives. They wanted to know what had happened to them and, and most of all they wanted to know if they had been raped. That was the number one question that was posed to, to the women when they were, when they came back. Um, overwhelmingly they denied it and I think the reason is that they, they needed to, to to blend back into society, they needed to come back uh, and live among, uh, you know, among other white people, and so there was a deep need to preserve their reputations, to to be able to put this part of their lives, to put this behind them, and and to go forward. After positioning his men at strategic ambush spots. Bateman calmly waited for the oncoming cattlemen. As Cyrus and his men neared the abandoned relay station, they found no sign of the gang. In fact, there was no sign that anyone had been anywhere near Old Sage Station for years. Young Cyrus knew that a few hours ago he had found his cattle in a draw east of the station, but he had no idea what he and his father were up against. They were about to find out. from the first time Cyrus McCall suffered wounds in an ambush, but an arrow this close to his spine was truly dangerous. Young Cy knew they had to make quick work of the rustlers, or he might lose his father.
seeing that the tide had turned against him, Bateman figured it was time for him to escape. All right now, this here's the white woman. I know none of y'all want to see her dead. He was convinced that, like Billy, he could avoid capture by simply being bold and clever enough to make his pursuers hold fire. Bateman tried to dress like him. He, he tried to create the same fearsome reputation as Billy the Kid. What I find really curious, though, is that, is that that patterning didn't carry over into his treatment of women. Billy the Kid could be quite uh, charming with women. He enjoyed the company of women, and he could be very warm and generous with women. But Bateman was a cruel and abusive man by all accounts. In fact, Sarah Allen, when she wrote about her experiences years later, said he was just plain mean. He knew that Sarah Allen would shield him, and if he could somehow get his hands on the lean black horse belonging to one of McCall's men, no one have a chance to catch him before he sought refuge in the mountains he knew so well. Little did he know that a dead man would be his undoing. Suffering a wound that would have killed most men, Cyrus McCall proved to be the last thing Caleb Bateman ever saw. That day, all but one of Bateman's men died, and that man explained exactly how Bateman had avoided capture for so long. Cyrus recovered and lived for another 10 years, gradually turning his Big Sky Ranch over to his son. Caleb Bateman finally ended up in an unmarked grave somewhere in Montana. The shootout at Osage Station did make a few newspapers, but it was barely mentioned east of the Mississippi. I guess you could say Bateman finally crossed the wrong man. Adios. Angels come to paint the desert nightly When the moon is beaming brightly Along the Santa Fe Trail Stardust Scattered all along the highway On a rainbow colored skyway Along the Santa Fe Trail 